In this lecture, I'm going to talk about maximal, minimal, greatest, and least elements of a partially ordered set. So let P be a partially ordered set. And now we make the following definition, definitions. Firstly, an element of P is said to be maximal if um, whenever x is less than or equal to y for any y in p, this implies that y is equal to x. In other words, there is no element of the partially ordered set p such that x is less than or equal to y except for x itself. And similarly, we can define a minimal element x in p is minimal. If uh, now we reverse the order relations, we say if y is less than or equal to x for y in p, then y is equal to x. Okay, so these are maximal and minimal elements. Uh, slightly uh, related, but uh, as we'll see, somewhat different concepts are those of the largest and least elements of a poset. So x belongs to p is the largest element of p or we'll just say largest in p if uh, whenever for every y in p um, y is less than or equal to x. So every element of the poset set is less than or equal to x. And finally the last definition x in p is least if for every y in P, we just reverse the order here, X is less than or equal to Y. So every element of P is greater than or equal to X, we could say. So uh, these are uh, four different notions. The first two are in some sense uh, dual of each other in the sense that uh, they, they come, they are related to each other by reversing uh, the partial order. And the third and fourth are again dual to each other. Uh, they are related to each other by reversing the partial order. Now, uh, let's look at some basic properties of uh, these kinds of elements. So firstly, uh, let's note uh, that every finite partially ordered set has a maximal element and a minimal element. has a maximal and also a minimal element. So I'll give the proof as a computer program. Uh, I'll write pseudocode. So um, I guess I need to say one more thing here. It's not true for every finite partially ordered set, but I need non-empty. Of course, if a partially ordered set is empty, then it has no elements, let alone maximal or minimal. So I'll give the proof as an algorithm that will uh, give you a maximal element. So take any x in p. Since p is non-empty, we can do this. And now I'll write a while loop. So while uh, x is not maximal, what should you do while x is not maximal? Well, if x is not maximal, then you can find uh, y in p such that x is less than or equal to y and x is not equal to y. So once you find such a y, what you do is you assign, uh, replace x by this element y and then you continue in this while loop. Now, <clears throat> this program uh, and uh, once you exit this while loop, which will happen when x is maximal, then what you do is you return x. Okay, so this program will clearly always return a maximal element of, uh, of p.
but uh, there is one problem here this program may not terminate what if every time you find an x you can find a y that is uh, such that x is less than or equal to y that's different from x okay so that's the only problem and so if we show that this program terminates then uh, we will have shown that the poset p has a maximal element so if it does not terminate what will happen you will be able to get x1 x2 an infinite sequence of values taken by the variable x and now i claim that these will all be distinct thereby contradicting the finiteness of p for if they are not distinct we have i less than j such that xi well this is going to be less than or equal to xi plus 1 which is less than or equal to and so on xj minus 1 which is less than or equal to xj and xj is equal to xi okay and uh, what this means is that uh, xi is less than or equal to xi plus 1 and xi plus 1 is less than or equal to xi this second inequality follows from the transitivity here we have xi plus 1 is less than or equal to something uh, which is less than or equal to something which is less than or equal to something and so on which is uh, less than or equal to xi which implies that xi is equal to xi plus 1 but this contradicts uh, the step in our algorithm where we assume that you know the element y that we are choosing is not equal to x and so contradicting our algorithm and so since x1 x2 x3 x3 will be a sequence of distinct elements of p uh, this means that p cannot be finite that completes the proof of course you can find um infinite posets which do not have maximal elements for example the partially ordered set of positive integers with the usual um total order or even you could take positive integers with the partial order of divisibility and the same kind of reasoning uh with the order uh, relation reversed will uh, tell you that every non empty finite uh, partially ordered set has a minimal element as well okay now let's talk about uh, least and uh, greatest elements and here the main result is uh, every poset has at most one greatest or least element it may have none as we shall see but it will have at most one and the proof is uh, very simple f um so usually the notation for the greatest element of a poset is one hat so let's say if one hat and one hat prime are both greatest so what does it mean for one hat to be greatest well this means that every element is less than or equal to 1 hat in particular 1 hat prime is less than or equal to 1 hat and 1 hat prime greatest means that uh 
one hat is less than or equal to one hat prime and together these imply that one hat is equal to one hat prime by the anti-symmetry of a partial order relation and so the greatest element has to be unique similarly you can show that the least element is unique um, so let me just reiterate the notation greatest element of a poset is usually denoted one hat least element of a poset is usually denoted zero hat okay and let's just observe uh, one thing uh, greatest element is always maximal but the converse is not true you can try to think of examples uh, of maximal elements which are not greatest uh, we'll see this in a moment and of course uh, maximal elements need not be unique and similarly we have that a least element is necessarily minimal but again the converse is not true let's look at some concrete examples We look at the poset P with the usual order has least element and minimal element uh, 1, the, the positive integer 1. Recall that P is the partially ordered set of all positive integers. And it has no maximal element. And indeed no uh, greatest element. So um, this is an example of an infinite partially ordered set. And so you see why we need uh, this um, hypothesis here in this theorem that the partially ordered set should be finite. Okay, let's look at another example and uh, let's look at the power set of uh, the set 1, 2, 3. So this has a unique maximal element which is also the greatest element Uh, which is the set 3 itself and a unique minimal element empty and this is also greatest and this is least. Uh, let's look at an example where there are minimal elements but no uh, least element. And that's, uh, that can be sort of cooked out of this previous example. Let's take the set, uh, power set of 3, uh, except let's remove uh, the empty set. Okay, so let's take the collection of all non-empty subsets of the set 1, 2, 3. And uh, partially ordered by inclusion. So here um, 3 is maximal, is, is maximal and greatest, but there are 3 minimal elements. So um, the singleton sets are all minimal elements. There is no non-empty set that is properly contained in these uh, singleton sets, uh, but there is no least element. So I hope this makes clear to you uh, what are maximal elements, what are minimal elements, what are greatest elements and what are least elements of a partially ordered set.